today I want to go over how we look or render headsets as opposed to how we might uh, model them up. Um, in most cases in our class, for my, my class at least, we've been modeling them up flat. Uh, so more similar to something like this, so it's a lot easier to work with axes and and planes and everything. Um, and a lot of the time, headphones are actually uh, sort of more in this concave shape um, where it's all tucked in. Um, that's so it can sort of stretch out to fit over your head. Um, I'm not quite sure which way they're actually designed. Maybe it's a combination of one way than the other. Um, and it also depends on the type of headsets. Ones that have um, like pivoty points here, it makes more sense to it to kind of look a bit flatter. Um, but then one where it's locked up like this, you might want to see it rendered um, with a bit of flex on the inside of it. Um, but yeah, in terms of actual CAD modeling and processes we've been looking at, um, a lot of the time it's been easier to just model them flat. Um, which isn't a problem, especially, you know, for what we're looking at, it's fine to have it flat. Um, however, uh, a couple of students have asked me, um, is there a way to change this? Is there a, ma a way to make it sort of flex inwards? Now, one, yeah, you could go back into your, you know, early freeform shapes and change everything to be flex that way. Um, you could create a duplicate file and experiment with that way. Uh, there is, however, a very good chance that will break everything in your timeline. Um, so if we're talking about this in just a way to get renderings, um, we want to do something at the end of our timeline. After everything's modeled up, maybe we can play around with it. Or even just, you know, flexing this and repositioning, repositioning this part of it. Um, so we're going to use this one as an example that I was going through in class the other day. Um, Fusion doesn't have flex tools um, based on what I looked up and what I tried to find in here. You would think near scale there would be a tool to flex. Other programs do have them. People have requested it for Fusion, but it's not there. So um, I figured out this somewhat cheeky workflow where what we can do is export our headset as a step file. Um, so I'll do that now where we go export step file and I'll just call it headset flex whatever um, and what we actually do is bring that into SolidWorks and use uh, the flex tool that's in SolidWorks um, so as a step file everything everything should work fine um, so we could close down Fusion I'll just minimize it and if we look here I've actually got my desktop open um, let's pretend that I don't have SolidWorks on my computer, a lot of you probably don't, you might not have room for it, or maybe, whatever, you just don't like using SolidWorks, that's fair. Um, so we can actually go and upload, and that's going to allow us to bring our, um, our files into my desktop, if I could find it, and wherever I've saved it to. Did I save it here? I probably saved it somewhere different. Ah, oh, sorry, I saved it as a Fusion file, not a step file. That's my bad. Let's just try that again. Export. Yep. Fusion files are pretty useless in most cases, so step file. Cool. And that should show up in here in a second. If I maybe refresh it, Fusion's kind of doing its thing where it likes to think that it's going to crash. There we go, there we go, 5 meg, that's fine, that'll take like a second to upload. I'm just going to chuck it on my desktop here, so we should see it show up, it's uploading to my desktop, and okay, so it's down here, and it actually says it wants to open in SolidWorks, which is fine, so if we double click that, that's going to go ahead and open SolidWorks up for us, which is quite neat. Um, so yeah, look, um, my desktop actually is working pretty well these days. Um, there's no real lag or anything like that in terms of your mouse and, you know, the computers on the other end are quite powerful. So, um, yeah, that's why I wanted to show the process using this. Um, so it going to say, do you want to run import diagnostics? We can just go, no, we don't need any of that. We're just 
just going to be modifying the shapes and exporting it back out. Um, yeah, so we can do that and we've got our thing here, which is cool. Um, obviously there is a little bit of sort of lag in the rotation and stuff, but it's really not a big deal. Um, so what we want to do is use what's called the flex tool. Um, so it's kind of, uh, hidden away in SOLIDWORKS. Like it's not, uh, I don't usually have my menu set up like this, but I don't see it here. Um, so what you can do is go to insert feature and you come down to flex. What this allows you to do is twist and bend and stretch and taper um, solid models or surfaces. So what I would then do is just come in and select all of your um, surfaces and solids. So what we're going to do is pretty much just warp our whole assembly. Um, it is possible that this will skew things and they might look weird. Um, depending on your type of headset, like maybe it would be better if I just flexed the frame um, and then repositioned the ear cups or something like that. Um, this isn't exactly um, a model I've spent a lot of time on, so I'm just going to just, just flex everything. Um, so we want to have a look at how this is working. And what it's doing is, well, if I just crank it up for however it was, um, it's going to start trying to bend it in a direction that works with these planes. Um, so it's actually kind of giving it a bit of a twist bend thing because it's not all straight. So what you actually need to do is orientate these planes uh, so you can get a nice outcome from them. So we'll just put that back to zero and I am just gonna open up my standard views which is a must for SOLIDWORKS I think. Um, and then we want to change some of these settings to just, um, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, we want to change some of these settings so our planes straighten up. So if you go zero on that, you can put zeros on it. So it takes out all the rotation and um, stuff. So now we just need to figure out, okay, we need to move it in the Y axis. So we can probably even just... Um, Oops, that's held in for some reason. Um, sorry, haven't used my desktop for a while and it seems to be a little laggy on the button presses for the mouse. All right, so we can drag that around and then just straighten it up. So it should be like 90 degrees, right? So now with it set like this, if we start increasing our flex, we'll see it's starting to warp our model. now. The way it's bending out is a little not quite right, how it's pushing this out so far or something. You can drag these sliders around to actually localize the flex in an area. Um, it may not be perfect at all, and I've spent not a lot of time, to be honest, exploring this. Um, obviously, that looks a bit weird. Um, there are ways you can do it where, oh wow, that's trying to go crazy. Um, you can do it and they get a decent effect and sometimes it comes out looking a little wonky. Um, but the thing is in like a stylized render or something like that, um, like in my class we were talking about using it to, yeah, make like the cover or the box cover image or something like that. Um, you can get some pretty cool stuff out of it. So like, yeah, you might do it like big like that and you can see it does twist. So maybe it is better to do the frame. Um, you could even then come in and scale the whole thing in slightly. So stretch it down as well. Um, but overall from like a side view or a side angle, um, if I finish that and if it will rebuild it nicely, Kind of takes a second sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't work. You have to play it like it'll say can't rebuild and you have to play around with some of the settings to a, to a point where it does like it. Um, you know, other ways you could do this is you could probably chop your top strap at some point, 
rotate these all in and just redo the top strap at the end. There's a lot of ways around it. Um, this isn't something that I'm going to be grading particularly harshly or anything like that. Um, I don't mind if your headset's straight or curved in, but if it's something you want to explore um, for renders or just your own personal practice, that's, you know, that's great. That's the kind of things we want to encourage with um, Advanced CAD. So we want some pretty cool outcomes, and that's really taken a while. So let's hope that uh, doesn't crash and it does out, output it. Um, the one I did yesterday took about 30 seconds to calculate up. Um, there are some option settings and stuff as well. Yeah, it looks like it did it break something. Kind of broke the earmuffs. They seem to have disappeared, which is... I haven't actually seen that before, so that's kind of funny. Um, anyway, so something like that. Yeah, look, it kind of distorts it a little. You could then massage it by stretching it inwards or collapsing it. What I'm going to do now is just kind of go with the rest of the sort of the workflow here, um, which is to save it as um, a step file again. Uh, let's just try and open that again, because I'm not quite sure what happened on my desktop there. It should open up to where we were at least. There we go. All right, not a problem. Um, it's not perfect, but that's okay. And we just have to allow us to pick a step file. Um, that's got the same name, so yeah, we'll just call it headset flex, like we meant to do before. And we'll hit that save. So part of this is showing off this, the other part is showing, hey, we can actually go back and forth between my desktop, um, which is kind of neat. So, okay. Um, yeah, so to do that, to get this back to our own computer, we can just go file download, go to our desktop, and that's where we have the headset flex file. It's gonna download it. I'm not quite sure where that's downloading it to. Now this is on my own computer. It's making a lot of big noises. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up on my side screen to actually locate where that downloaded to. But what we're gonna look at now is um, opening that file uh, in Fusion now. So let's just go to downloads type in flex there we go and that should open that uh, file up I'm just gonna close my window that's got my desktop on because it keeps beeping at me and hopefully it'll open that up and we can have a look and we'll see maybe this could work maybe it won't maybe it's a good way of visualizing what it could be like and then we can model over it to fix up the errors that go areas that go wrong um, that's absolutely not a like foolproof hey it absolutely fix it and now it's perfect sort of thing um, so we can see now back in fusion it even looks like it kept the same sort of materials which is kind of neat um, there is a chance it makes fillets and stuff look weird um, like the outer outer shell or the outer bit looks like it looks fine um, so what I'll just do is I'll save that and I'll insert it into um, this file here so we can see down here it's been saved out when it loads in I'll drag it in or if I'm just impatient it will yeah so we can see it's not too far off um, it did kind of bow out and I think this headset's a bit wide anyway um, so if we were to maybe look at um, hiding some elements of either of these we might be able to find that some parts work and so we'll go here that's no good to us visibility cannot be changed all right so you gotta actually edit it in here to hide the things you don't want um, which can be a bit annoying at times but fusion is going to do what fusion does no, that's fine. We'll hide all these unstitched surfaces. So pretty much we did just want to like flex the top. 
Um, and it does look a bit off, so maybe I'll just scale the whole thing inward slightly as well. Um, so we'll just go with a non-uniform. The point we want to scale around, uh, we just want to maybe pick out, oh, that's unfortunate that our origin isn't in the middle. Um, and I didn't like that didn't like that at all. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I was thinking like 0.95 or something, not 0.5. That should bring in the outside a bit. Mm. Maybe I'll just leave the scaling. It did seem to do a bit, but if I was to then use this properly, I might even just like chop across here and move it in because it's all about sort of visuals at this point. From the side, you can't even tell. It looks great on the side. Everything looks great on the side. Um, so anyway, I'll go back here. This will, if I have to save this, so the actual uh, fusion-wide reference updates, this now needs to be updated. Uh, there are ways to just set and um, modify in context, but it's a bit easier to organize everything if you do them separately. So this will update. We'll be able to show and position the ear cup sections. You know, we can see if it still all lines up. Hopefully it does. The components out of date. I, I think I just did that, to be honest, but um, let's see if it works. It's still trying to save it, so... Fusion's being a little slower than usual. All right, there we go. So we've got that. Um, if we show our bodies, we can go ahead and hide the sort of the main parts. Um, all right, so really, we want to hide all this up here, and what we want to do now is position these um, little components as it's split up into a couple. Uh, we want to see if we can position this nicely. Um, within this uh, sort of main cup area and obviously this is the kind of thing that will be different for everyone but I'm just gonna set the pivot point uh, that should have put it in the center of the circle but it, for some reason put it really far away there we go so setting the pivot there is just going to allow me to rotate it a lot easier like kind of like that Shouldn't be too big of a deal to drag this around. And we can, oh, might help to close SolidWorks on my actual computer as well. So something like that looks kind of close enough, I guess. Um, maybe we'll just fix our rotation up slightly. Let's just go there. Perfect, maybe a little less than perfect, but perfect enough. Um, the idea being that, hey, now it's kind of flexed and it looks a bit, maybe a bit more natural on this side view. Um, yeah, it's not quite perfect at all from the front. Maybe that'll require some more experimentation. Um, but, you know, for me, if I was to then, you know, I could go in... Um, I could either remake this because uh, really like this part isn't very hard to make once you do it once you kind of understand it so like maybe redoing the top strap even just positioning the cups and modeling the strap on its own could potentially work because um, really all we did get out of that was the flex of the strap um, it does give you quite an accurate type of flex of what it would look like um, so you can use it as like a basis, but maybe shrink it down because the idea is it almost flexes, it flexes outwards on a real headset instead of flexing inwards. They're made to be at this sort of angle and then they open up the other way. So um, yeah, we can go with that. Um, but yeah, look, if you're doing something just for a render, you put it on the side view, you bump up the perspective and all that, you can get some pretty cool outcomes. Um, yeah, so anyway, a couple of students asked me about this and I just wanted to go through it. Um, hopefully it helps. Um, it's obviously not applicable to everyone, 
But um, yeah, I thought it was a cool workflow, especially because we get to go to my desktop and come back and upload and download. So um, if there's apps or programs, as we call them, on um, my desktop that you don't have, um, it's really not that hard to go back and forth between them. Maybe this is something we'll explore a bit more in the um, in the next assignment, uh, which could be cool. But um, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. And, you know, if you really don't want to position the second one, you could just flex that. Um, but, yeah, all right. I hope that helps. Um, and if there's anything else um, for my students or students from Caroline's class that, like, you really, uh, I don't know how to do this, um, this little bit's giving me trouble, uh, shoot me a message on Microsoft Teams or something, and um, I'll, like, maybe make a tutorial video real quick, just like this. I think this is actually a pretty good way to go about tutorials, um, you know, recording based on some stuff people ask, um, and then obviously the pre-prepared class content. So we'll see how this goes. Maybe we can do this method a bit in assignment two, in assignment four now for the next one. But um, anyway, all the best. Hope all your renders start to come out really cool. Thanks.